to it. However, Elsha's mission, or Jesus' mission, was to save the whole world, and his kingdom was not to be of this world. Elsha sent two of his apostles to King Agba, Abga, and the king was healed. The people of Urhai, the last kingdom of the Asherite people, all accepted Elsha, or Jesus, as their Lord and Saviour. Thus, the Asherite people are the first people to accept the faith in his name as a nation. This was indeed the best choice any nation could make, and the Lord saw to it that this nation that repented, even at the time when Nineveh was the seat of the Asherite Empire, would become the first Christian nation to accept him. Christian nation, a nation as a whole, to accept him as their Lord, and that he would, they would carry out his message throughout the world, and that they would preserve the scriptures in his language. Nishana Atika Sabreya, the second scribal language. Yeah. It's amazing how Jonah went there, and they were like all these pagans, the king was pagan, the people were pagan, etc. Et they had these Asheroth poles, the Starte poles, whatever they were, uh, these pagan idols, these gods. And then once Jonah preached, the king declared, We as a nation are going to drop all our pagan idols, smash them all up, our maypoles, whatever. We're going to put on sackcloth, throw dust over ourselves, and repent. And we're all, as a nation, going to follow this god of Jonah. Or Jonah the dove, right? So. They wrote down all that he said in cuneiform on tablets, like clay tablets, and supposedly the uh, library was created uh, to store them all. And then later on, centuries later, the Nineveh was invaded and destroyed. The library was destroyed. And then around about 1900 or so, uh, Henry Layard, archaeologist and his friend Ram Moose, who was a Muslim, went there, found it, dug it up, and shipped Ran about 50,000 clay tablets, pieces, uh, complete, etc., uh, to the British Museum. And a guy called George Smith, George W. Smith, helped them to translate it into the nearest English because he was proficient in that. And this is what Victor and Alexander has used as well. The Mesopotamian cuneiform tablets, which are like 3,000 years older than the biblical scriptures, etc., Survival for the men of Nineveh. The 2000 national election in America, and it goes on about that. Democrats, Obama, and so forth. America is no longer safe haven for Christians. The second wave of Islam. And he makes a statement here about the Asherite king. Agba, or Agba the Black, of Edessa, Urhai, was the first king to accept Yahshua, Meshika, which is the Messiah, as the Messiah prophesied by the scriptures during the first decade of his ministry on earth. Thus the Asherite people were the first country to become the followers of Yahshua, or Ishua, the first country or first nation, as a collective. Because remember, the uh, Israelites were a tribe. Everyone else was a tribe, not actually a nation. But this country or this nation, it's a civilized nation, right? Followed him, believed in him, and followed him. Exactly 2,000 years later, the United States of America became the first country in the history of the world to officially abandon Christianity. On January 20th, 2009, President Obama, President then, took the official oath of the office without putting his hand on the Bible. You see him pictured there, he's got no Bible in his hand. On the other hand, this is the official White House picture on the event. Obama soon declared that the U.S. was not a Christian country and that the U.S. had never been a Christian country. No one in the U.S. government had ever objected to his or this declaration. Mosque at Ground Zero. The truth is a sword that cuts both ways. The ancient Aramaic scriptures are the greatest weapon for the children of Asher. This is the age when you should wield the sword of truth. Today is that day, which has been in your position for 2,000 years. The scriptures that were compiled by the saints of the ancient church of the East are the only viable weapon the Asherah have. Yoshua, or Ishua, or Jesus said, The truth is a two-edged sword. That means the truth cuts both ways. You must not stand to the left or to the right of the truth, but behind it, lest you inflict harm on yourself and your cause. It has been seen 
how the US came to the Middle East to protect its interest against Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda. The first time the US struck at Saddam Hussein, it was only to drive him out of Kuwait. That did not work ultimately because Saddam Hussein kept on financing the suicide attacks against Israel. President George H. Bush, W. Bush, did not want to attack Iraq by air during a Muslim holiday, so he asked the TV evangelist Billy Graham for advice in the White House, and then the elder Bush decided to bomb Baghdad on December 26, one day after Christmas. What the elder Bush did not know is that the Christians of Iraq celebrate Christmas for three days, unlike American Christians who throw the Christmas tree out on the 26th of December after the presents have been opened. The fact of the matter is that the US or its Western allies never considered the presence of Christians in Iraq when they decided to attack Iraq. The Muslims, in their turn, looked at the Christians in Iraq and the Christians in the entire Middle East as allies of America and its war on them. Thus, the extermination of Christianity in the Middle East intensified ever since. Now is not the time to worry about the politics involved because at well, that particular time, the genocide against the Asherah began in the 4th century AD and continued ever since. The first attacks against the ancient church of the East occurred in Jerusalem. The European Crusaders attacked Jerusalem in search of treasures and occupied the Holy Lands with the excuse that they were rescuing Jerusalem from the Muslims. The Crusaders were supposedly Christians, but they came into the ancient church of the East Temple in Jerusalem with their horses and with their swords drawn. They killed the priests performing the Orthodox Mass. The Asherah left Jerusalem never to return. So they were mass murderers, right? And that's who they killed, burnt in those churches, probably, in Jerusalem. When the uh, Muslim Omar or Oman turned up to come and invade it and rescue these people, etc., etc. Right? When the Roman general Constantine adopted Christianity in his quest to recover Rome and become emperor, he attacked the Asherah bishops and priests of the University of Urhai, today's Orpha, in Turkey. He killed them and drove them out of Asia into Persia. The kings of Persia gave the ancient church of the East protection, even though they were not Christian themselves. They were probably Zoroastrians. The Roman Catholic Church did not recognize the ancient church of the East and began to alter the scriptures to serve its own purpose. Mother Church, they want to be the number one. That is why the Catholics and the Protestants that emerged out of the Roman Catholic Church still claim that the New Testament was originated in Greek. Jesus spoke Greek, the apostles spoke Greek, the disciples spoke Greek, etc., etc. It was all originally written in Greek, and so forth. In fact, the theologians and scholars of the Roman Catholic and Protestant churches have continued to make this claim, and they further claim that even the Old Testament was preserved by the 70 Greek theologians, the Septuagint, that translated it from Hebrew two centuries before the time of Eshul, or Jesus. The Catholics began buying all the ancient Aramaic scriptures during the last few centuries and hiding them in the Vatican Library, as we previously guessed at. Right? The American missionaries in Urmia, Iran, translated the Assyrian Bible from the English language Bibles and claimed they translated it from the Aramaic. The American Presbyterians set up a school in Urmia called the Kala and taught the brand of Christianity to the descendants of Asher from Iran, Turkey, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon. Today nobody dares to say that the American missionaries were fakes because they will cut off the funds in aid to the Assyrians that they have duped. The worst part is the persecution of the Asherite in the Middle East as stooges of the Americans. There is absolutely no reason for the Asherite to suffer in this way anymore. The US had a president who was born and raised as a Muslim, Obama. The U.S. had officially abandoned Christianity by declaring they are not Christians and never were Christian. They were not Christian and never were Christian. The truth is a two-edged sword. Wield it now. Yosha, or Yeshua, Jesus said regarding the temple in Jerusalem, destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. The temple that Yosha or Jesus built is not a temple made with hands. It is a temple made of faith built by the preaching of the true scriptures. Yosha or Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecies of the scriptures. The descendants of the Asherah people were destined to serve the Lord from the beginning. That is why scriptures were recorded in Asherah, ancient Aramaic. Go all out, or go out all over the world, 
and preach the truth about the faith in his name. Joshua said in Matthew 12, 39, 41. A wicked and adulterous generation asks for signs, but no signs will be given to it except for the sign of Jonah, the prophet. Remember him? He went to Nineveh and preached to those Ninevites. For just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth, or a tomb, three days and three nights. The men of Nineveh will rise at judgment with this generation, he's talking about that generation at the time, and hold it accountable. For they repented by the preaching of Jonah. And behold, one greater than Jonah is here now in that era. Jesus the Messiah, or Yeshua Meshika. This is what he was saying to the uh, Pharisees. And he said, you know, you, you read your scriptures, looking for me, see if I'm in there, and here I am standing right in front of you. And you still don't believe that I am who I say I am, or what it talks about, right? That It talks about me from the very beginning up until that particular point, right? And then later on yeah, Revelations 22 etc right? this is what Joshua or Jesus said about the asteroid 3000 years ago now is the time when the mission begins wield the two edged sword of truth today test the spirits and allow the sword to cut both ways do not be swayed by politics or economics the mission of a true follower of Joshua or Jesus is to spread the word recorded for posterity in the ancient Aramaic language and that's what we the ministry of the truth are doing okay different people that we meet we've got to go do it full scale okay out on the road right out on the street in our town local town the language that Yeshua that Jesus himself spoke therefore be not swayed by those that say we are Christians like you help us rid the word of this and that this is not your mission your mission is not to fight or kill anyone your mission is to preach the truth do not follow leaders that want to use you as pawns in their quest for money or fame fame and fortune of this world are meaningless in sight of the creator everyone and everything is dwarfed by his presence do not allow yourself to become part of petty schemes the pursuit of dead issues become a force for the good of all peoples the scriptures are all you have now and they are written in the ancient language of your ancestors he's talking to the Asherah okay. the Assyrians the Assyrians study the ancient language the Shana Atika sacred scroll language of God right and teach it to others in praying and glorifying our Maran Yashua Mashika see he came in the title of his father Maria or Maran okay, this, this is reserved for him okay. he's the Maria this is not a war talking about economics and Obama etc on Easter Sunday is an act of solidarity Stop the genocide of the Eastern followers, Mashika or Masihien. Okay. It is important for Eastern followers of Yosha, Mashika, Isa al Masi, to disassociate themselves from Western Christianity. Don't call yourself Christians. Bam! Isn't that what we said in our other videos way back? That the disciples didn't want this word which came from the Greek it was a Greek loan word by the Romans yeah, which yeah, it was Christos, Christus etc which meant and they, they used it to say oh they're the slaves of this Christus, this Jesus Christ right because okay. they follow him and they say no no we're not going to embrace that name Okay, we're Galileans we're under the Jewish Mosaic law etc etc we're kosher so we're going to stick with that uh, we're not accepting this Christian, uh, this Roman pagan title, right? We are going to call ourselves Mashikai. Yeah? Or Masihien. Yin. So it's important for Eastern followers of Yosha Mashika, Isa al Masi to disassociate themselves from Western Christianity. Don't call yourself Christians anymore. The Muslims think that you are affiliated with America's secular policies. Moreover, Obama was raised as a Muslim and all his family is still Muslim. Not only has he declared that the US is not a Christian country, the entire US government, all three branches of government, the Congress, the Supreme Court and the executive branches are in the hands of secular representatives, judges and leaders. 
if you live in Muslim countries, approach the Islamic leaders through legitimate representatives of your churches and declare to them that you are Eastern followers of the Masih, that you are not like the American or even European Christians. Make it clear to them that you call the creator of the universe Allah or Allah like them. But there is a difference. That you have not invented other names for the creator such as God, etc. Yahweh, Elohim, etc. etc. Tell them that you respect the Prophet Muhammad just as they respect your right to believe in your Masih or Mashika. Whether you are called Asherai, Assyrian, Coptic, Armenian, Ethiopian, Abyssinian, Chaldean, Maronite, Syrian, Jacobite, Byzantine, or whatever other Eastern church you may belong to, make it clear you are an Eastern follower of the Messiah and not a Western Christian. Ask the Muslims to stop killing you and driving you out of their countries. If you live in exam Islamic countries and you belong to a Western church, you should seriously consider returning to your Eastern church. You have to save your life and the lives of your children. American Christians have never accepted your form of Christianity as genuine from the beginning. That is why they have ignored you and tried to convert you to their form of Christianity. Yeah, they keep trying to do that today. Yeah, they keep trying to convert us to their way of thinking, their Christianity conform to what they dictate. No, nah, sorry, I'm not doing that. Which is based on distorted Greek and Latin translations. Why get yourself killed for nothing? Make peace with Muslims and encourage everyone to make peace with Muslims. And make peace with everybody else as well. Okay. Be at peace with everybody else. Don't be at war with them. Okay, this goes on about Senator McCain. It's very windy outside. You hear that noise? It's very, very windy. And the third river is the Tigris, which flows out of uh, flows east of Asher. Genesis 2.40 or Brita in the Aramaic Genesis in English the Asherai are the people of Mesopotamia or as the land is called in the Asherai language Bet Narain and that's where Victor N. Alexander the translator of these original manuscripts comes from they had three capitals Asher, Nimrod and Nineveh the last capital fell in 612 BC there are very few Asherai left today however they are a significant remnant as the Asherai people's ancient Aramaic language is the key to understanding the Bible and all the Holy Scriptures. Despite the small numbers, the Asherai people have until now retained the Apostolic Christianity in the land of their ancestors. Here's a book that he did on the first civilization. Story of the Asherai people struggle for survival. The First Nation uh, Can't really read that. To make it bigger. Whatever that says here. Something in the world. Religion in the world. The First Nation to spread That religion I have to make it bigger so you can see it story of the ancient people's struggle for survival the first nation to to spread civilization in the world that's what it looks like Hmm. Interesting. He goes on about Obama. For the followers of Isha Mashika in the world, now is no time to stick one's head out. Move away from trouble. Turn your face away from false Christianity of the West, the false Christianity of the West. Stay true to your apostolic faith and live at peace with the enemies of false Christianity. Accept no aid from the false witnesses of the West. They will wave money at you, but they will never give you a penny. It is only a way to lure you into sacrificing yourself and your families for the sake of their attaining the victory against the enemies. They will discard you like a spent shell from their weapons and never look back at you. 
They went into Iraq and left without ever recognizing your rights to exist as a people of antiquity. They ignored your genuine contribution to civilization and ascribed it to Arabs and Greeks. They were they went into e Iraq in the name of friendship and left Iraq for the Islamic extremes in the name of democracy. They went in one way and came out another. The Democrats played a game on the Republicans. They are liars and can never be trusted. Do not believe in any appeals made to them. Do not set value on any sentiments they mouth. It is only their lips speaking, but not what is in their black hearts. They are the party that pretended to be Christian, but lied about it. And now they do not even lie about it. Obama had straightened everything out when he vote, when he declared in the Turkish parliament that the US is not ever or is not or ever was a Christian country. That is going to be his biggest that was going to be his biggest contribution to the truth about America today or from then onwards. The American Christians will never be able to take back the country anymore and therefore they cannot help any other struggling Christians anywhere in the world. They are heavily outnumbered by the enemies of Christianity from within. So your Judases are within your own country. The Lord's mysterious ways. Everything is in the hands of the Lord as the Muslims are attacking false Christianity throughout the world. It is time for the Asherai people to preach the apostolic faith to all the nations of the world that are followers of the false gospel translated from Greek and Latin. This is not the time to seek a land with to settle. This is the time to scatter among the nations that need a return to the original faith that Yeshua Meshika, or Jesus the Messiah, inaugurated in the language of the men of Nineveh. He secured it in that, right? This is your language, your opportunity. And he's again talking to the people of Syria, the Asherai, etc. Your opportunity to serve the Lord. Rise to the occasion, return to your ancestral church, a church not built with hands, Rekindle the spirit of your ancestors and preach the faith in the name of Esau, Yoshua, or Jesus. Persecution of descendants of the Asherai. With over 2 million Asherai people in turmoil in the Middle East at that particular time, it is urgent for the Asherai people, was urgent for the Asherai people, and their relatives in the rest of the world to reach a unified plan to save those people who are refugees outside of Mesopotamia and bring them out to European countries and Australia, etc. In the U.S., there is persecution for all Christians. Not even American Protestant Christians can say grace at official dinners anymore. A school coach and a school official are being tried by a federal judge in Florida for saying a simple thank you prayer at a dinner to raise money for sports. For centuries, all the phony churches in America and Europe, both Protestants and Catholics, have been falsely blaming the Jews for betraying Jesus. Well, they are betraying the genuine descendants of the Apostolic Church in the Middle East now there are the real Christians or these are the real Christians why don't these so called Christians in the West raise a cry as to the persecution of the true followers of Jesus then don't they have the guts to open their mouths in the UN United Nations and speak out but don't wait for the phony Christians to do anything for you in the Middle East it is advisable for all descendants of the Asherai people and the other Eastern Christians in the Middle East to return to their ancestral churches Advise all your relatives in Mesopotamia to avoid contact with phony Christians from the US. The Asherai people all over the world should return to the ancient church of the East. Christian martyrdom in Iraq. Offer peace, forgiveness and friendship. The second decade of the 21st century begins at this particular date, December the 31st, 2009. They are living in different times at that point. The Asherah people are on the cusp of a new trajectory, a new path, right, a new angle. The preservation of the Asherah heritage and the dissemination of the true scriptures, spreading of the true scriptures from these original manuscripts, right. One of the biggest lessons of the scriptures is the survival of a nation outside of its territorial imperatives. In today's world, there are no sovereign territories left. Everything is in constant flux. Therefore, play the odds and survive as best as you can, by any means possible. All right? But righteously. Stay true to your character and your faith in Yahshua Meshika, or Jesus the Messiah. The US officially abandons Christianity. And Obama was officially declared for the Turkish parliament in his time. And he declared that the US is not a Christian country. It should be clear then to Eastern Christians of the Middle East 
that the US will no longer safeguard the interests of Eastern Christianity. Of course, the US has never done that in the past either, but there was a bit of propaganda that they did for a hundred years. In fact, for the Christians who lived in the Middle East, it was always clear that the US only catered to the Muslims and ignored the Eastern Christians. Even the American missionaries of the last century did nothing for the Eastern Christians of the Middle East. Therefore, it should come as no surprise to all the Christians of the East now that the US has officially abandoned Christianity as Therefore, it should come as no surprise to all the Christians of the East now that the U.S. has officially abandoned Christianity at that time when Obama was in as a religion in America and onwards. If one thinks of it, it is only the Muslims and the Jews that even called the creator of the universe by his Aramaic name, Allah, or as he is called by Muslims and by Jews, Allah and Elohim, respectively. Only in the West, the creator is called God. Of course, God is an English word for Allah. However, there is a difference in how the Western churches in the Aramaic-speaking world thinks of the creator of the universe. So it is not just a matter of the name. That is why the Americans do not treat the Eastern Christians of the Middle East as, a genuine, as genuine Christians. But the fact of the matter is that the Americans themselves are not the genuine Christians that they pretend to be. Otherwise, why would they abandon Christianity in one hour? None of the political parties or, or any U.S. government body now call themselves Christians. Did this happen because of one speech by President Obama, former President Obama? No, it has been going on all along. The U.S. was never a genuine Christian country. Yes, there are individuals in the U.S. that love the Lord, but they are in the minority. And now increasingly, so, the only thing one can do for those Christians is pray for them. Maybe they will become the healing balm for the nation rise of the Antichrist as the US at that point officially abandoned Christianity through Obama's declaration that they had uh, that there wasn't that America was no Christian nation never had been citing the satanic doctrines of separation of the church and state look out for the emergence of the Antichrist who has not made his face known yet the betrayal of Christianity in the Middle East is at hand the second exodus has already begun the only thing left to do is preach the true faith in Meshika, or Ishul Meshika, or Jesus the Messiah, the Messiah, in the original language of Eoshua Meshika, or Jesus the Messiah. Preach it to the Western countries and in America. Teach them the Lord's Prayer in the Lishana Atika, the ancient Aramaic. This is your sacred duty as a nation. Asherai people, Syrians, right? Just as Jonah preached the true faith to the men of Nineveh, now it was the turn of the men of Nineveh to preach the true faith to the Western world and to America. There are still individuals among them that want to know the truth. Amongst these American people, these Westerners, etc. Barack Hussein Obama is president of USA. Okay, and it goes on about him. He's no longer the president. Uh, Trump was, but he's no longer the president. Joe Biden is, and maybe soon he'll be ousted out. Okay. And he talks about genocide in the Middle East. Exposed. It is undeniable fact the US is not a Christian country. The US was never a country that defended Christianity. Many people over the years have thought this way and that way about the Christianity of the American people, but this election exposed the truth about America forever. That election at the time of Obama. His declaration that America was never a Christian country, that they aren't Christians. Yes, it is true. Many Christians flee to America to escape from the persecution by the Roman Catholics two centuries ago. But then the Catholic Church was reformed and the Inquisition came to an end. The Dark Ages of Europe were over and Catholics themselves began to go to America. Today, the Catholics and the Protestants have come to terms in America. They live in relative peace with each other because apparently the Roman Catholics, the Vatican, etc., can't stand them. Okay. they'd rather get rid of them but they're being nice and leaving them alone because they sided with them they're affiliated to them to their churches through their practices etc their garb their costumes and so forth however in the last hundred years the Christians of the Middle East have been fleeing to America to escape from Islamic extremists this has been a mistake 
Eastern Christians cannot find a spiritual home in America. American Christianity is phony. It is based on tithing and corrupt to the core. It is totally a business. Imagine what on television some of the ministers bringing sick people in wheelchairs and after they say a prayer over them, the sick jump out of their wheelchairs and dance around. Yeah, it was all fake. <laughs> it's been proven to be fake. Yeah. Uh, people uh, in the aisles, etc., in the hallways, ask them questions and stuff. Um, get to know all the information. They're actually like, it's connected to the preacher who then says, Oh, I see that you are, and you are this and this. Oh, how did you know that? Yeah. And there's a lot of these people that jump out of their wheelchairs after being healed. You see them in another video, they were dead in a coffin, and then suddenly they came to life. Right. Well, this is stuff. It's the same person, right? Well, this is stuff. And they're shaking around, dancing around. Oh, I thought it was the devil and spitting in all this sort of stuff. And then next time you see them, they're like, you know, the acting is another different kind of person who had two buckled legs or something and they got healed. All that sort of stuff. It's all phony. Yeah. However, in the last hundred years, the Christians of the Middle East have been fleeing to America to escape from Islamic extremists. This has been a mistake. Eastern Christians cannot find a spiritual home in America. American Christianity is phony. It is based on tithing and corrupt to the core. It is totally a business. Imagine, on television, some of the ministers having or bringing sick people in wheelchairs. And after they say a prayer over them, they, the sick jump out of their wheelchairs and dance around. It is like a circus. They are all paid performers. And persecuted Christian and Muslim countries think that these Christians will save them from persecution? Now the American voters... Okay, they seriously considered electing a former Muslim. And goes on about Obama. The U.S. only cares about peace in the world for the sake of a free trade, or free trade, democracy and freedom. This you can expect from America even if Obama at that time became the president. But do not expect that the U.S. is going to safeguard your rights as a Christian in the Middle East any longer. The U.S. policy towards Eastern Christianity has been exposed finally. If you are a Christian refugee, go to Europe or Australia. If you are living in the Middle East, do not get involved in politics. Iran is safeguarding the rights of Christians in Iran. Iraq will do the same if the US remains in Iraq militarily, which they will not if Obama well, he became the president, right? Iraq will probably end up as a hell for Christmas. The rest of the countries of the Middle East are trying to, were trying to very to various degrees safe make it safe for Eastern Christianity as long as Christians there did not align themselves with Western Christianity, which is a mistake anyway, because Western Christianity is bogus. Christianity it always was and always will be. In fact, it is the duty of every Eastern Christian to preach apostolic Christianity to the Western nations. Wherever you are in the Western world, the Lord will bless you if you are a witness to Eosha and Meshika, or Jesus the Messiah, and teach them how to pronounce his name correctly and tell them about the truth of the scriptures. You can use YSHO, which is just basically Esho, okay, because it can be difficult to pronounce this. Eoshua Mashika, so it's easy to say Esho or Esho, right? Mashika is what we found. This is your Christian duty. Forget about preaching to Muslims. It says in the Quran that it is a crime punishable by death to preach to Muslims about any other religion but Islam. Yet they can preach to you, right? Live at peace with Muslims everywhere. Let others fight over religion. If you are an Eastern Christian, remember Yahshua or Esho said, My kingdom is not of this world. Therefore, live wherever it is safe and live. The unwavering ally. Uh, I'm not too sure if he voted for John McCain's Syrupanian. Nineveh in the 21st century. Not a day too soon, the Patriarch of the Assyrian Church of the East, Mar Dinka IV, declared in a sermon the need to establish a temporal authority for the Asherite people in North Mesopotamia's Nineveh province. The Patriarch had already resolved the major differences in faith because between his church and the Chaldean rite of the Catholic Church and the Syrian Orthodox Church. And the U.S. economy at that time was in shambles. The defense of democracy in the Middle East was soon to come to an end. And goes on about the Democratic Party. It is imperative for the Asherite people to unite under one church, the ancient church, established at the time of Yosha, or Jesus. 
Yeshua or Jesus, the Messiah and the Apostles. The Assyrian Church of the East is the last branch of this church that reached its height in the 12th century. With missionaries going as far as China, even the Emperor of China was converted to Christianity in the 5th century. By the 13th century, however, the ancient Church of the East came under heavy persecution in the East and began to dwindle. Furthermore, in 1553, the ancient Church of the East split into two denominations, the Aturai, the Assyrian Church of the East, and the Chaldean Church of the East. Soon, the Chaldeans joined the Roman Catholic Church as the Eastern Rite of the Church, and the Aturai, Assyrian Church of the East, continued to exist and call itself simply the Church of the East. The Aturai, Assyrian Church of the East, has never been accepted in its rightful place by Western Christianity. After the printing press was invented, Gutenberg Press, in Germany and the Bible was published in Europe, Western Christianity went on its separate way. The Catholic Church itself, the Roman Catholic Church itself, became fragmented as everyone began to interpret the falsified Bibles according to their own predilections. Myriads of denominations followed in the wake of the various translations in all the languages of the world. The ancient Church of the East Scriptures was abandoned. Was abandoned. The translations in all the languages of the world okay, uh, Myriads of denominations followed in the wake of the various translations in all the languages of the world. The ancient Church of the East Scriptures was abandoned. The Catholic Church kept buying and locking away all the ancient Church of the East Bibles. Today all the Western churches deny that the ancient Aramaic scriptures are the only authentic scriptures remaining in existence. Moreover, the Western churches, relying on Greek and Latin translations of the scriptures, introduced an anti-Semitic form of Christianity and outright racism. Thus, the Roman Catholic Church papacy condoned the genocide perpetrated by the Nazi Catholics. They gave Hitler blessings. You can see it in the old photos, in the old movie footage, film footage. Yeah. Thus, the Catholic Church papacy condoned the genocide perpetrated by the Nazi Catholics in Germany against the Jews of Europe. Millions of genuine Christians were murdered in Europe, and the Native Americans were decimated as a result of these false interpretations of the Bible. Unfortunately, Eastern Christianity has been given a bad name as a result of the Western falsifications of the scriptures. It is time for the Asherite people to wake up and divorce themselves or separate themselves from this form of Christianity and simply call themselves by their own true name, Asherai, followers of Yahshua, Mashiach, or Jesus the Messiah, or call themselves Mashikai. The world wants to live in peace. And remember, you can't be a Mashikai if you're following Western Christianity. So don't go around using it and saying, oh, Mashikai, you know, when you're not. Okay? It's like saying you're Hebrew Israelite and you're an original Jew and all this sort of stuff when you're not. Okay? You make up these fancy names to try and enforce that. The world wants to live in peace. Let there be peace based on toleration of all religions. The Asherai people should not follow any government policy in the world which leads to their being involved in religious or political issues. This is a time for survival. And remember, he's, he's talking about, or talking to his people, the Syrians, the Asherai, the Aturai, in America and around the world. No matter how wonderful Senator John McCain is, he goes on about him. Must have obviously liked him and voted for him. Uh, Nunavut province is an autonomous state in Mesopotamia uh, the Asherai people resettled in the land of the ancestors the Asherai people need to assert their identity under one name the Asherai in order to succeed in the efforts to live in peace in the Nineveh province as an autonomous state in Mesopotamia. The first order of unity is in returning to the ancient roots. Asher was the first capital of the Asherai people. Nimrud was the second capital and Nineveh was the third capital. The Asherai people were the first people to recognize one God, Allah, Elohim, Allah, one creator. Yahshua, Jesus spoke in the Galilean dialect of Asherai, or Asherit, the language of Asher. Asherit is the original name of the language of the scriptures. 
it's the original language of Mesopotamia, the language that God spoke with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joshua, or Jesus, the Messiah. Yeah, the uh, Lishan Atika Supreya, the second scroll of the language of God. May Maria, that's Lord Master, Allah, or God, guide you and protect you. And he goes on about 9 11. In memoriam. The child of Iraq. Final betrayal. Succumbing to terrorists. Fan of the union to protect the Christians of Iraq. These SRI people, etc. Okay, so we hope that's opened your eyes. This video has opened your eyes to especially the SRI people, the, Assyri the Syrians, to wake up and go back to their roots, to back to their Church of the East, drop Western Christianity, the bogus falsified Western Christianity, and embrace their ancient, original manuscript, scriptures, etc. So yeah, we hope that this video opens your your eyes to what's really going on behind the scenes and that you'll make this change. That you'll seek out a apostolic, orthodox, Catholicos, Church of the East and learn about the original, ancient, very old Galilean Aramaic, Tab Asherit, or Aramaic, Old Testament and New Testament scriptures from these priests of that particular church, which are the most authentic scriptures available today, translated by a native born Aramaic translator from Mesopotamia, Syria, Victor in Alexander. So, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, add your comments below the video, we'll get back to you on those as soon as we can and you can share this with all your family, friends and others, your neighbours etc and you may come across some Syrians and say hey I watched this video on your histories and your episode Church of the East and these supposed authentic scriptures tell me about it, teach me about it yeah, I'm interested if these are the authentic and the true scriptures compared to the American or the westernized American etc falsities then I know all about it so teach me tell me reveal it to me Amen